Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this video we're going to continue rebuilding, cleaning and testing all the auxiliary parts that need to go on the engine of Old Rusty. Uh, we've done in the previous video we've done a reconditioning of the fuel pump we then tested it and installed it and in this video we go into work on the starter motor and this is the starter a pretty heavy guy I don't know if it's a 12 volt I suspect it's a 6 volt starter uh, but we'll find out uh, I'm going to take it apart because I want to completely clean it we're certainly going to check the brushes uh, but let's see where, how far we get with this so we're going to start with removing this old cable it's kind of interesting to see that this old starter doesn't have the normal solenoid typically you have a solenoid on the side but this one doesn't have one so let's see if we can take this guy off and then continue well, that's not too bad sometimes these things can be very hard to get off if you're lucky they have used copper screws and I think in this case it is actually a copper uh, nut sorry not screws nuts all right so that has to be renewed anyway so I can put this aside and all this is insulation so I'm going to leave that where that is for now and now we're going to take off this protection here this is kind of a metal clamp that goes around it that will give you access to the brushes so that should come off easily so inside you actually have the brushes huh? um, and I don't know what state they are in so let's have a closer look and these are the brushes and they're still sticking out so that's good it means they are not really all worn out but I probably could replace them but anyway let's take it further apart and now I have no idea how good this will go I haven't tried it before so that's what I expected so we're going to do this a bit different let's see That always works. All right, so let's see if we can take all this off. <clears throat> I have no idea on how to take the rest apart I just need to have a close look and figure out how that all fits together I almost would think that this cover comes off somehow and this might just come off as well unless it's been held in place by a lock that seems like it's loose so I think I can get this off ah yes that seems to come out okay and the brushes are coming with it but now of course they are stuck so I need to undo these screws and then I can take the whole thing out yeah, these are the screws that are holding the brushes in place there we go there should be probably be one more you know. There's one more on this side, as you can see. Now with that removed, I can now take care of that one brush which is still fixed on it. 
So if I lift this. All right, this is out. Once you've got that one out, uh, the rest will follow easy. Um, okay, so now let's check this guy out on this side. And we will do the same thing. I don't know if you can see it, guys, but this is a bit of fiddling. Huh? All right, that worked. Okay, as you could see guys, uh, I wasn't sure on how to take this apart, but basically we had two big nuts to undo and then we could slide the whole thing off, uh, but the brushes were holding back and these are soldered brushes, they are soldered or clamped on there. So that's those two. I actually uh, had to lift the brushes out first to get it all out. Once I got one out, everything went out fairly smoothly. Uh, brushes are not too bad, they are not perfect, but they are not too bad. Now I need to see on how I'm going to get all this out. Now that's another challenge we have, right? So let's see if I can get this top part out now. I probably will need to do it the same way. Try to knock that off and then if you can slide it off, I'm not sure, um, but I would suspect so. It seems like it wants to go, but something is holding it. Yeah, that opens up. And here we go. So we got it apart and it doesn't look too bad, to be honest. Um, that's where the brushes slide over. And, well, it's not too bad. I'm just going to clean that up with some uh, very fine um, abrasive paper and then see uh, how good this still is. Inside the unit uh, you find uh, these two big coils and these are actually electromagnets. Uh, so they will magne magnetize this whole field. Um, in new starters you have permanent uh, magnets quite often, but not in this type. I took the starter motor further apart by releasing those two screws and by doing so I can expose the Bendix because that cover goes over it. Now the Bendix is a mechanism that will allow the small tooth wheel to grip onto the flywheel to start the motor and once the motor is running and you stop the contact or you stop powering the starter motor this tooth wheel has to retract because otherwise the starter motor would be spinning with the motor all the time and in no time you would really have a major issue. So if you start the motor or you engage the starter motor it will start running and this tooth wheel will fly forward see and then once the motor is running and you let the contact go or you stop power providing or you stop to provide power to the starter motor it will just fly back and this is how a Bendix is working. I'm kind of like surprised that this engine already has a Bendix but good um, it is what it is and I'm quite happy with that so we're going to fix that system we're going to clean that up but it still looks pretty good so there isn't a lot to be fixed on that it even comes back nicely. I've seen uh, systems where this uh, got stuck on the out of sight and it got actually stuck on the flywheel and then people drove away with the car and the consequence was that then this really started running hot because it was been spinning with the engine at a very high speed and in fact the whole starter motor started to act like a dynamo and it melted um, the mains power coming to it. Not a pretty sight to see that. And that's what I want to clean up first. In between them, there should be insulation, the lines that you see. Now for that, I'm going to use a grit 1000 um, paper and some DWD-40, as you've seen. And I'm just going to go around and clean that up. Now the lot, just enough so that all the debris is off it. Right, that should be good. 
And this is just brake cleaner. Always works fine for me. And I think this looks already a lot better. Before I'm going to test the starter motor and see what parts need to be replaced, I need to understand on how that starter motor is working. So we have an axle which is going all the way through this whole system. On this side we have the bandic system and that's the mechanical part. But on this side we have the electrical part and this being a direct current driven motor we have something what we call the armature. This is this whole area right here. Not this part of course but it's all this. This is the armature. It's a steel core you have windings in it, thick copper wires, and we have a commutator. And this is the commutator. And before I can actually test this out, I have to know exactly on how this is working. So before we start to test it, I'm going to take you through a little explanation on how a DC starter motor is supposed to work. But first of all, a little view on the mechanical part. Now, most DC starter motors, they will have a solenoid which will push forward this tooth wheel onto the flywheel and it grabs onto the teeth of the flywheel and then it will rotate the flywheel and start the motor. Now this one doesn't have that capability. It doesn't have nothing to move this forward. However, the mechanism of this one is that this little tooth wheel here has a certain mass, a certain weight. So whenever we start spinning the starter motor, it's going to take a bit of time to overcome this inertia of this tooth wheel. So if the motor, start motor starts, it moves forward and you can see that. And then it locks onto the um, teeth of the flywheel. And you can see the worm wheel right here and that's the part that is moving forward uh, the tooth wheel. Once the engine is running, this will be pushed back. So this is a very old style uh, Bendix. But now we need to focus on the motor itself. Magnetism is a main factor in a starter motor and I have two magnets here and if we place the two magnets together we have a north pole and a south pole and we know that uneven poles will attract so let me show you that. Did you see that? On the other hand, if I can get them apart, if we do the same thing but now we have equal poles so north north or south side they will push each other away. See? So we can say that objects with even poles will be pushed away and objects with uneven poles they will be pulled together and I think that's the main principle I want to explain here. And I have made a little setup to explain on how the DC starter motor is working. And then we'll have a look on the actual motor itself. Looking on the setup you see the blue block as being a permanent magnet facing with its north pole towards the inside and the red one is another permanent magnet with its south pole facing to the inward side. And this, well, this is our armature of our motor. It's nothing more than a looped wire back and forth and at the end on one side we connect the plus uh, 12 volts or 6 volts and on the other side the minus uh, 12 volts. So a current will flow through this loop and when a current flows through this wire, and this is a DC current, it's going to create a magnetic field. And the magnetic field will be as such that half of the uh, loop will be a south pole and the other half of the loop will be a north pole. So the blue being the north, the red being the south pole. So what happens is if we place this armature like this and we would apply power, then we know that uneven poles will attract. Now this is now a north pole and the red is a south pole. It is not going to go this way because then we would have even poles and we know that it pushes things away. What's going to happen is the magnetic fields of the magnets of the red magnet which is the south pole will attract the north pole of the armature and the red side, which is actually the south pole of the armature, will be attracted to the north pole of the permanent magnet. And the whole armature will actually rotate like this. So this is how you get this rotation done. Now obviously, once it's in this position, it's not going to go any further anymore. 
But if you have multiple of these loops on your uh, armature, and then you have the uh, commutator, which you're going to break the signal, this will then rotate and it will pass a little bit further and then this loop will get no more power but the next loop which is built behind it will get the power and the same process is going to repeat. Once you've done 180 degrees rotation then of course the direction changes uh, of the loop, right? So the plus and minus sides are always on the same side and because then the direction of the applied power changes, the magnetic fields change. And this is how you're going to make this whole thing spin. So now we can do a couple of checks and verify in the actual start motor on how that is working. What you see here is the housing of the starter motor and inside you see the north pole and on the other side you have the south pole but this is not a permanent magnet as you can see it has a little bit of magnetism because it's metal but it's not strong but what you see is around it there is a coil and that's a whole bunch of windings and these windings are creating an electromagnet so once power flows through these windings this magnet will be very active so the plus 12 volts or 6 volts is applied to the top and it comes out on this soldered joint and as you can see it feeds to the electromagnet it's going to run through the whole magnet and it comes back out here on that brush and the same thing is happening on the other side plus 6 or 12 volts is applied to the same kind of type of electromagnet it runs through it, it creates a magnetic field and come, the power comes back out of course on this brush and these brushes are going to connect to our commutator now back to the real armature and if you look closely you'll see these thick copper runs and there are multiple of them right so one two three four five six and you can keep on counting that is the same thing as what I've shown you here this that's exactly what's inside so one side of this cable terminates on the commutator on one segment of it it has the copper lead connected to it it goes through the uh, core and then returns back on the other side and terminates on another segment on the commutator and we have multiple of them so that's what makes the motor spin however we need to apply power to this now one brush and this is what we call a brush sits on that and you can see that is exactly fitting to one of those segments one brush will get the power the output of the electromagnet because you've seen these brushes on this other side let me pull this real quick over here so you can actually see it that's that brush that would be sitting there like so so the brush coming from the electromagnet sits over here and a second brush which is the other side of this uh, wire the thick wire here will be sitting maybe something over there and hopefully you can see it and now power will now come in on the top which is the plus 6 volts through or the plus 12 through the electromagnet and the current will flow through the brush through the segment over this thick copper wire comes back on the other wire over here and feeds back out on this brush back to the ground or the minus uh, plus or 6 volts that causes now an electromagnetic field in here and because we have these electromagnets sitting here with north and south pole this whole thing will now rotate one step let me show you that so the brush and now we rotate now while it's rotating normally it would stop right at the end when everything is aligned but as this brush is going to move from one segment to another power is reduced on one or amperage and more is being provided on the other one and now it's been pushed even further and that's how this keep on rotating very simple mechanism so now we can actually check on how this winding is done now uh, there are multiple methods on starter motors now this one you cannot apply the 180 degree test oh this is a kind of a bee which is bothering me there are multiple types of starter motors typically what people say use 180 degree measurement so you would measure continuity between one segment and the opposite 180 degree segment and that should give you continuity uh, if it does not then the whole system is broken however uh, in this case that is not a measurement I can do because this is different this is constructed different the windings are 
quite different uh, compared to what you have on other starter motors. So if I'm going to measure continuity, 180 degrees, I will have it. But what I want to measure on this is continuity between one and all the other segments. This is what I need to measure on this one. And this is specifically to this one. Also on standard modern starter motors, you would measure uh, between one segment and the other that there is no continuity between the center one and its adjacent um, communicator segments. In this case, it would all feed through. So I'm going to check that all these segments are having the same continuity and I'm also going to check that none of the segments is leaking out to the actual axle or the metal part here because that would be a short and that would be no good. And for that you're going to need a voltmeter. So when I said a voltmeter, I actually referred to a digital meter or an analog meter where you can measure ohms or resistance. I'm going to place it on the smallest scale I can have and then I'm going to measure between the segments. So one and two and I, as you can see I have a direct connection. Now on a normal starter motor, a modern one, you should not have this. It should be open and I can keep going and I should have almost the same reading every time. I'm just going to go around until I'm done with this and then we know if this is good or not. And the next thing to measure is to see if there's any connection between any of the segments of the commutator and the actual frame or the axle or the metal part of the motor and it isn't and if it was then you would have a leak or a short and that would be no good. You might want to set your voltmeter to a higher um, resistance value and then check it again. But as you can see, this is wide open, so this is a good test. We verified the armature and that seems to be in good working condition. But there's a bit more. We still need to measure out these solenoids that are inside the housing of the starter and we need to check certain isolation factors on the panel with all the brushes on. So that's the next thing we're going to do. And by the way, I have it already cleaned up a little bit, so it makes it easier to work. So let's start with the brush panel and see if we have the right isolation or not. Now that's our brush panel and there are four brushes on it. Two brushes are coming back from the electromagnets. That's that one and that is that one. And those are the positive side, the positive brushes that are going to grab onto the uh, commutator. So those must be absolutely isolated from the metal frame. And the other two, that's the negative side, they return. So that can be connected to the metal frame. And if you look close enough, you see actually an isolation panel right here on the positive side. So what we want to make sure is that there is no short. So let's use the meter again and check that out. So you can hear the beep. That is actually a short. So let's check this out and I measure no short, it's wide open, that's what it should be. We're also going to check the other one. If I check on the other side, the directly connected brushes to the ground, obviously we have a beeping sound and we have a ground connection. So depending on your specific starter motor, you need to be careful with isolation factors that certain brushes must be isolated from the chassis or the frame and others not. For the rest, uh, this part is now completed. We also verified the bush and the bush is good so I can move this aside and keep it ready for the final installation. The next thing we're going to do is to verify the electromagnets in the main housing. And for that we're going to use an ohmmeter again. I'm going to put it to the smallest scale to begin with. So the first test we're going to do is to connect the probe to the positive side so the lead going to the positive side of the battery so the power feed and the actual frame of the device, so the metal part. And I have no conductivity and we shouldn't have any. So that's good. If you have a short between those two, then you really have an issue. So now let's measure between the positive side and the first electromagnet coming out on the brush. And here I have a nice continuity. And on the other one, I'm having exactly the same nice continuity. So now I know that all this is good and we are ready to reassemble the starter.
we have verified everything that we could verify. We cleaned everything. Uh, I know it's not a full 100% high current check that we've done, but it is a very basic and good test, I believe. And now we can actually assemble the part. Now, it's going to be a little bit tricky to do that because the um, brushes that you have, I tie them down with tie wraps that I can cut later because it may not always be that easy to... Um, offload these springs that are pushing down these uh, brushes, especially when I have to put these brushes up that are connected over here. So it's not always that easy. So I might be suffering a little bit while I'm trying to assemble it, so just bear with me. I'm not gonna modify the video so it all looks like hunky-dory and easy-peasy because it probably isn't gonna be like that. I also fixed the Bendix, see? Now it's coming back real nice. And that's what I was supposed to do. I also placed some copper grease on the top of the copper or bronze bearings on both sides. So that's always good. That is good for high temperatures. Not that you need to do it, but I like things to be greased a little bit. So let's give it a try and see what we can do. Now that's the easy part. We just need to slide it in and then make sure that everything aligns over here. That's all what we need. And there's a few screw holes. You really can't go wrong with this, as they say, but it seems like I am already going wrong with it. Let me just see if I can line it up as it should be. Yeah, I think this is right. So let me see how this is now supposed to be fitted. So this front opening here, I need this to adjust this brush. And then the bolts are lining up on both sides. And I also have access for these uh, brushes. They will have to be tied in to that one. So that one will go there. Yeah, that will all work. So I'm gonna mark this so I know exactly which way to get it on. Well, this was a bit of fiddling. At the end, I removed the brushes again uh, on all four of the brush sockets and then placed the panel on. That turned to be the easiest way. So now I'm going to try to fit the brushes to these holes. And again, that's going to be a little bit of fiddling, but I will work. Getting the brushes in wasn't all that easy, but at the end I was able to swing it with some pliers and lifting the spring and then push them in. Now what I have to do is to hook up the bushes connected to the ground, so I need to move this underneath and then through that hole there I need to put a screw and then I should be able to connect them up. Again, a bit of fiddling, but at the end this should also work. Now, I don't have a 6 volt battery yet. But I'm going to use my charger, which is a 12 volts charger. I'm going to put it to boost and I'm quickly going to touch the contacts to see if it's going to run or not. Uh, once I get the 6 volts battery, I will do a full test. So I have the negative side on the frame. This is the positive side. So let me just touch that. I'm going to hold the motor. And you can see that this is actually working quite well. Of course, not fast enough for what I'm using it for, but it works. And I don't want to do it too long because I'm going to burn out the motor, but it works. And to finish it all off, I'm going to put some insulation tape up to cover the holes where the brushes are, because this was the old piece and this is the new piece. Uh, it's a bit wider, but that's okay. And I'm going to tape that in place now. Now this is still loose, but that we will connect as soon as we have the proper cable to connect to it. There we go, and that's all set. And now we can try to fit the motor. Let's 
So I'm going to have a check how that works with the flywheel on. And let's see. And it seems like this is going to grab in the right way. I can also see the wear and tear on the flywheel and on the bandex and the angled edge. So that should be okay. We are nearing the end of this video and have verified and checked and cleaned the starter motor. And by the way, um, remember this shaft here? This is the uh, rocker shaft. And uh, there was a discussion ongoing uh, if the oil feed holes should be on the bottom or on the top. Uh, many people said they should be on the top. I thought they should be on the bottom, uh, but I wasn't sure and uh, nobody was sure. So meanwhile, I found out an old manual that actually the holes should be facing downwards. So I was lucky to have it installed like that. Anyhow, uh, guys, uh, keep on commenting and keep watching out for Old Trusty because more is to come. And thank you for viewing. Bye bye.